Alright fellows, this one is a quick one, I promise. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about some little audio things and settings for Premiere Pro. First off, about my workplace or workspace setup. Um, I made one audio. Keep in mind, if you want to make a new workspace, just uh, create a new workspace first. Um, in this case, audio editing um, because if you don't do that you actually change your current selected one and if you make all your changes and then save it and you have two with the same settings and um, yeah it can be tricky sometimes uh, reset current workspace works but yeah it can mess up things a little bit so keep that in mind first and basically I arranged just, um, well, the peer view and program window a little bit smaller um, to make up more space for my tracks so I can have um, bigger waveforms. And actually in the new version, in Premiere Pro CC, you can actually save um, a preset for how your tracks look and what stuff you have here and the head and everything that um, yeah, makes this workspace work. All right, um, that's just uh, little things um, to keep in mind. And here's the actual trick I want to show you. Just a little one, but it really makes uh, a difference. Um, say you want, I have sounds here, I have to line them up. It's the cheering sound, um, I play it for you. So I really want to hit um, the spot after she jumps, bam. And if you have sounds that need to be lined up very precisely, uh, especially if you have like an interview and want to sync by hand to the camera sound or whatever, um, it can be tricky to line that up if you have frames in your timeline ruler. Um, because, you know, it gets a little bit tricky. Uh, I show it to you. I really can only uh, move that thing by frames and you know 25 frames per second um, is not really precise sometimes if you need that. So, so first I would like to make a marker just to have the spot where I need the sound and what I do next is change my timeline to show audio time units. And what this does is actually change the ruler to samples. And so now if I also switch off snap with the keyboard N, I have actually FCP settings <laughs> and made them myself, uh, changed them a little bit. So now I really can, as you can see, go in and make the smallest changes possible. And even if I zoom in a little bit more, you can see I can really, you know what I mean? Um, and um, yeah, that sometimes is the trick to line up uh, stuff uh, precisely. I go to my point and I have my mixing settings here. Uh, keep in mind, it's a little bit tricky to uh, arrange um, clips with the keyboard uh, with that. But yeah, it can be done. You can see, I can really just make um, small changes and I always can switch back to and um, then I can make the big jumps. <laughs> um, yeah, that's basically it. Um, just that quick little tip. Uh, if you work with precise audio editing and arranging and stuff like that, that little thing can help show audio time units um, can be found here in the panel menu thingy. Um, also a little thing in the new version, uh, sometimes um, if you want to go back to the old way of showing waveforms, and that's really just in the new version in CC in Creative Cloud, um, you go back to the old way. Um, some people like that. I actually kind of like the new version. It, um, especially if you have low stuff, um, it shows you the waveforms a little bit 
better and you can align stuff sometimes easier, sometimes not. So yeah, keep that in mind. Those both uh, little menu items rectified audio waveforms and show audio time units. Well, that's it for now. Next up, I will talk a little bit more about the audio monitors I use. Uh, I compare those to the M-Audio BX5 and I also will talk about my mic I use right now. It's the Samsung G-Track and I will dive into getting audio from Premiere to Audition and back a little bit more. That will come in the next few, well, weeks, <laughs> maybe days, who knows. Keep an eye on my blog and if you have any questions, please let me know and I look into it. And yeah, that's it. See ya and take care. <laughs>